everyone, and welcome back to the show. In this series, I teach you everything you need to know to build reusable UI components in SwiftUI. Last time, we added a clear button to our reusable text input field, and today, I will show you how to expose the inner state of a view. This allows users of your component to react to changes that happen within your component. For example, to display custom error messages if the user entered invalid data. Let's get started. All right, today we're going to look into how our text input field can signal to the outside world that the user has entered invalid data. To give you a better understanding of how this would look like, let's take a look at a sample app. So here we've got a simple input form that asks the user to enter their email address and then confirm it. This is pretty standard and you've probably seen forms like this before. So we want to make sure the user enters a valid email address in both fields. And we also need to make sure both email addresses match up. That's the whole point of asking people to enter their email address twice, right? So the submit button should only be enabled when both of these conditions are true. So currently both input fields show an error message saying, please enter a valid email address because they're empty. Okay, so let me enter an email address. Let's use test at test.com. And as soon as I type, the UI updates and tells me that this is not a valid email address. So let me enter the complete address. And as soon as this is a valid email address, the error message disappears and the field name appears instead. But instead, there is now another error message on top of the input form which says emails don't match, which is obviously true. Okay, cool. So let me confirm my email address. And as soon as I type the final letter, all conditions are met and the button becomes active. Sweet. So to implement this, we need to do a couple of things. First, we need to add a property to the text input field that allows us to specify that a particular input field is mandatory. Then we can add some code to validate the user's input. If the input is invalid, we'll display this on a little error label just above the input field. So we need a little bit of extra UI for this. And, and this is the key moment for this episode, we're going to expose the validation state to the outside world. So once this is all implemented, I will show you how to update the input form in our sample app and use combine to handle the overall validation state of the form. So we've got a lot to do, let's jump right in. So as a first step, we want to implement a property to tell the text input field that it is mandatory. Now, your first instinct might be to add a new parameter to the initializer of the text input field, but this would result in a pretty unsightly API, especially if we were to add more parameters later on. The better way to do this is to use a view modifier. And of course, we're going to apply what we learned in the previous episode and use the environment to implement this view modifier. Let's get started. So before we can implement an extension on view to make it easier for the user of our component to make it mandatory, we need to prepare the infrastructure to write to the environment. We've done this before for the clear button, as you can see from the code here. So this should be easy now. Okay, so let's first define an environment key. And to do this, we define text input field mandatory and make it conform to environment key. By default, we want all our fields to be non-mandatory. So we'll define the default value of the environment value to be false. Cool, so now that we've got the key, we need to create an extension on environment values. This will allow us to write our value into the environment. Is mandatory essentially is a computed property and we use the environment key we just created to read and write from and to the environment. Now that this is in place, we can create an extension on view 
to make our text input field mandatory. This extension can be applied to any view and if you're wondering why that is, check back in the previous episode where I explain that this is really essential. Um, and if the caller doesn't provide a value, we will assume true, which is a meaningful default value. After all, when you apply this view modifier to a text input field, you expect the input field to become a mandatory field, right? Inside the function, we use the environment key we just created to write the value into the environment. This infrastructure allows us to use the Swift UI environment to specify the behavior of our UI components. This is exactly what many of Swift UI components do as well, and it is the reason why you can use a view modifier on a container component like HStack and apply it to all UI components that are in that container. If you'd like to learn more about this, I recommend watching the previous episode up here, where I explain this in more detail. Perfect. So let's go ahead and use this in our component now. Okay, so you know that we can use the add environment property wrapper to read information from the environment and this is what we're going to do right now. So up here, let's define a property named is mandatory and fetch its value from the environment. Awesome. So this means we can now check the state of this property when we need to decide whether or not to verify if the user has entered any text. So the next step is to implement our validation logic. Whenever the user types anything, we want to check that they have typed the correct thing and we want to validate their input. There are two ways to do this. We can either use combine and set up a pipeline on the text property on our component, or we can make use of the onChangeOf view modifier. This time around, let's use the onChangeOf view modifier to see how it works. We can apply the onChangeOf view modifier to any view and then specify the property we want to observe. Okay, so to track the validation state, we need two additional variables. One to track if this input field is valid and another one to hold an error message we can display to the user. So let's define two add state properties at the top of the file. And now we can use them to track the validation status down here in the onChangeOf handler. Great, so let's now add a text view to display an error message whenever the text input is invalid. Since we are using a Z stack to manage the layout of all our views, this means we can just add this new text on top of all the other views and it will be displayed in the correct space. And the formatting is very similar to the text field just below, so we can just use the same values. Cool, so let's now see if this works and run it in the preview. But before we can do that, we actually need to turn validation on for the input fields. So let's go over to email validation form and add the is mandatory view modifier to the input fields. All right, and now let's refresh the preview and try this out. Right, so if I enter something, the overall error message will tell me that the emails need to match, but what about the empty state? Shouldn't I see an error message for empty input fields? And it seems like this does work, but only after I type something and then remove it again. Well, it turns out that onChange is only fired if the observed value is actually changed. And when the view initially appears, no change will, will be triggered. But we can use the onAppearViewModifier to run the validation logic as soon as the view appears. <laughs> 
And instead of duplicating this code, I will first refactor this into a new function. So select this piece of code, open the context menu, and then choose extract to method. And the cool thing is I can start typing the name of the new function, validate, and it will be updated both here and at the call site. I can now add an on appear view modifier and call our new function from within. And now let's quickly check this again by refreshing the preview. And now we can see that both fields show a validation message because they are empty. And when I enter some texts, the error messages will go away. Right, so it seems this is working fine, but you might have noticed that the submit button is active even if the email addresses are invalid. And that's because we haven't exposed the is valid state to the outside world yet. To do this, we need to use a binding instead. Bindings allow views to share state. One view usually defines an add state variable or a published property on an observable object, and the other view accepts a reference to that as a binding. Both views can then change the value in the variable and the other view will receive the update. In our case, the text input field can change the isValid binding, which will be reflected in the form containing the input field. So that's exactly what we need. Let's go ahead and add a binding that we can use to communicate the validation state to the outside world. First, I am going to add a new private add binding variable to the top of our component. Next, I will add an optional parameter to the initializer so the caller can pass in a binding. And then down here in the initializer, I will assign this binding to the private add binding I just created. In case the caller doesn't provide a binding, we will provide a constant binding to true ourselves. Great, this helps us to communicate with the outside world, but we're not done yet. If you paid close attention, you will have noticed that we now have two variables for tracking the validation state, isValid and isValidBinding. IsValid is our internal representation and the isValidBinding is the connection to the outside world. To make sure the internal validation state of our component gets propagated to the outside world, we need to add a property listener to isValid. By doing this, any changes to isValid will be applied to isValid binding, which will consequently be visible on the outside. All right. And with that, it is now time to update the code that uses this text input field. Let's go back to email validation view model. Now here in the view model, we already have two published properties that we can use to track the validation state of the input fields. So let me quickly uncomment them. And then down here, we have a combined pipeline which currently uses the emails match publisher and assigns its results to the isFormValid property. So let's combine this publisher with the publishers that track the validation state of our input fields. Cool, so isFormValid is used to toggle the submit button down here. And all that is left to do is to connect the published properties to the isValid binding on our text input field using the updated initializer. All right, let's now refresh the preview to see this in action and verify everything is working as expected. Okay, so the fields are marked as invalid because they're empty, so that's good, that's better than before. And once I start typing into the first field, it will become valid, but the form is still invalid because the fields don't match. So let me fix this. All right, and as soon as both fields match, the submit button becomes active. Now, if you recall the app I showed you in the beginning of this episode, you will notice that our implementation isn't quite complete yet. 
We can specify that an input field is mandatory and if the user hasn't entered any text, our implementation correctly detects this and sets the isValid property to false. And since this is a binding, we can react to any changes of this property and update the surrounding UI accordingly, for example, by enabling and disabling the submit button. However, we cannot detect if the user actually enters a valid email address. And that is something we're going to implement next time. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit the thumbs up button to let me know and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to be the first to know when I upload new material. And if you haven't, check out the other videos in this series as well. Feel free to leave any questions in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.